Basically, when we're looking at a risk premium, we're talking about compensation for risk. So this is going to be the additional compensation that we receive above a base, right? So we're basically going to have a base case, and then we are going to add on to that, basically, that compensation. Okay? And that's, that's essentially what we're looking at. Now, with regard to this, is we're going to use the example based off of car insurance premiums. Now, on a car insurance premium, we look at these, we have one of these over on this side, right, is an Audi R8 and versus this older minivan. Now, on these two things, which one of these do we think is going to have a higher insurance premium? Of course, it's going to be this one over here, the sports car, right? We think of these as being a much riskier because you can drive them much faster, and you're going to see a higher insurance premium on these. Right, so the risk premium is essentially the same sort of thing. Right, that premium is the amount that we pay above that base amount. Okay, so we're going to be evaluating these. You know, we have a, one is a sports car. It's going to have a higher risk, so a higher premium associated with it. Uh, we also look at younger drivers. Right, a 16-year-old male is in, in the highest insurance class and at the highest rates. Versus somebody once they hit 25 is going to have a lower uh, risk premium. They have lower premiums. Now, we can look at this as being the same way as a financial asset, okay? So, we take what we call a risk-free rate. This is essentially the, the rate at which we have zero risk, and in a higher interest rate means we're going to have higher compensation for that risk, okay? Our basic equation that we're using here is this one right here, right? Is Ri is equal to R sub Rf plus a risk premium. RI, so this is basically what the interest rate is on our I security, and that's just however we, we discuss it, okay? This one here is our risk-free rate, okay? So that's that, that base uh, of it, no risk, and then the risk premium out here is incorporating all sorts of, of other risks. The one, the number one thing we, we always think about with this is going to be the impact of default risk, okay? This is the probability of defaulting on our debt, not paying anything back, right? Now, when we look at this, is the example we're going to use right now is going to be a case where we have, once again, Ri is equal to R sub Rf plus our risk premium, okay? Uh, where we're at right now is that we have a, uh, a risk-free rate of 1.95%, right, which is a 10-year U.S. Treasury. So we're going to use this as basically being a 2% risk-free rate, okay? What we're also looking at is we're going to be evaluating two different companies right now, one of which is going to be GE, and the other one is going to be GM. So, right, we have General Motors and General Electric. The two of these have very different risk profiles. One of them is in a stalwart, is a Fortune 500. It's, it's very much a blue chip, which is, which is GE. And then we have GM, which is emerging from bankruptcy and is going to be a little bit of a, of a higher risk. Okay? Now, GE has, currently has a, uh, an interest rate on their bonds of right around 3.25%. Okay? General Motors, on their same, same bonds, same basically everything going on have a 5% rate of return on their bonds, okay? So what we're seeing here is that GM itself is, is definitely going to be a little bit more risky. Okay? So what we're looking at here is we're going to be comparing the GE risk-free rate is at 2%, and it's also the same on General Motors, okay? These rates right here come from the a U.S. Tr Treasury, okay? So these are going to be a 10-year maturity. Um, that's the rate that we use a lot of times, but it's the Treasury bill. It's one of those in which the federal government is not going to default on their debt. They haven't in their history before. Uh, so, and they have their ability to print their way out of it. So this is considered to be the lowest possible risk of, of any asset class out there. Okay? And then we also have to now discuss how that risk premium incorporates into this whole thing, right? So when we solve all this, is that this is showing us 
that our risk premium, GE's risk premium, right, we solve for that risk premium, that's showing that GE's risk premium then is going to be 1.25%. Okay? Alternatively, General Motors' risk premium is going to be at 3%, okay? which this makes sense. General Motors is riskier, so they're going to have a higher return required. Right? So that risk premium is that compensation for taking on the additional risk. Okay? As an investor, I buy some General Motors bonds. I need to get compensated for that additional risk. Okay? Uh, thank you much, and hope you enjoyed it.